Welcome back to my channel, Explained, where we discuss one interesting topic a week. This is the start of the series of what is in the Quran. I'm making 30 videos to explain 30 chapters of Quran. Today, we embark on a journey into the depths of knowledge as we explore chapter 1 of the Quran, the Holy Book of Islam. We'll delve into its profound messages and unravel the wisdom contained within. So, sit back, relax, and let's begin our intellectual adventure. Before we start, I'd really appreciate it if you share this with your friends and family members. Before we delve into chapter 1, let's quickly set the stage. The Quran is divided into 114 chapters, each called a surah. It was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, over a period of 23 years in the 7th century CE. Chapter 1, known as Al-Fatiha, holds immense significance and is recited in every unit of Muslim prayer. Al-Fatiha, meaning the opening, consists of seven verses, making it the shortest chapter in the Quran. But don't let its brevity deceive you. Within these few lines lies a wealth of knowledge and spiritual guidance. The chapter begins with the Bismillah, an Arabic phrase meaning, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. This verse serves as an introduction, reminding Muslims of Allah's attributes, his infinite mercy and compassion. It sets the tone for the entire Quran, emphasizing the importance of seeking Allah's guidance and mercy in all aspects of life. Now, let's explore the remaining six verses of Al-Fatiha. These verses are like a roadmap to the straight path, guiding Muslims towards a life of righteousness and piety. Verse 2 reads, Praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Here, we acknowledge Allah as the sole creator and sustainer of the entire universe. This verse encourages us to express gratitude and recognition of Allah's grandeur and dominion. Verse 3, the most gracious, the most merciful, highlights Allah's attributes of mercy and compassion. This serves as a reminder that seeking His mercy and forgiveness is vital for personal growth and spiritual well-being. The fourth verse, Master of the Day of Judgment, reminds us that we are accountable for our actions and that there will be a day when we will stand before Allah to be judged. This verse instills a sense of responsibility and encourages believers to live their lives in accordance with his guidance. In verse 5, we seek Allah's guidance, saying, You alone we worship, and you alone we ask for help. This verse emphasizes the importance of directing our worship solely to Allah and seeking his assistance in all matters, recognizing our reliance on him. Verse 6 continues, Guide us on the straight path. Here, we implore Allah to guide us along the path of righteousness, seeking his guidance to lead a virtuous life. It's a humble request for steadfastness and divine guidance. Finally, verse 7 concludes Al-Fatiha with the affirmation, The path of those who have received your grace, not the path of those who have brought down wrath upon themselves, nor of those who have gone astray. This verse highlights the importance of seeking company and following the example of those who have received Allah's blessings, avoiding the paths of those who have gone astray or earned his displeasure. And there you have it, chapter 1 of the Quran, Al-Fatiha. Although brief in length, its verses are rich in meaning and guidance. This chapter encapsulates the core teachings of Islam, emphasizing devotion, gratitude, accountability, and seeking Allah's guidance. I hope you found this exploration both enlightening and thought-provoking. Remember, our journey through the Quran has just begun, and I can't wait to delve deeper into its timeless wisdom in our future episodes. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, so you won't miss any of our upcoming explorations. Thanks for watching. Hope you find this video informative. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more interesting content.